The next part of the reflection asks you to think about what is the real, what should the role of the real world be in a math classroom? And I asked you to think about three classrooms. You read three short vignettes, but I want to start with a, uh, another classroom, Classroom M, which I call the really bad story problem classroom. This is a classroom that uses, or a textbook that uses real world contexts that are so contrived and so superficial that they're very damaging. So here is a, a comic strip of Lucy from Peanuts, and she's saying, only in math problems can you buy 60 cantaloupes and no one asks, what the hell is wrong with you? And we've all seen this. We've all done a math problem, and we just think, this, these numbers are ridiculous. This doesn't make any sense. And what might the teacher say in that kind of classroom? The teacher might say something like, you know, don't worry about that and just do the math. And what does that communicate? That teaches Lucy that any outside knowledge she has is irrelevant in the math classroom and that clearly math doesn't have anything to do with the real world because we always ignore it and we just do these ridiculous problems. I want to share another example from a textbook that I've seen um, and this was when they were doing data so they were doing things like mean, median, mode and the problem was to find the average speed of these animals in this chart. I just have a very difficult time imagining a real life situation where I might be interested in the average speed of animals like a cheetah, an elephant, a mouse, and a spider. It's just not a context that where I think I would actually want to find the average speed. And so again, this just communicates that math doesn't really apply in the real world and we just make up these sort of fake superficial examples, but any real world thinking or reasoning you might bring is irrelevant to the math classroom. Uh, so I will say, you will see a lot of Classroom M. Many textbooks look like Classroom M. They use very contrived examples, and it sends a problematic message to kids about math teaching. The other thing we have a lot of examples that you will see a lot in classrooms is Classroom N, where I said um, this is a classroom where there's a real focus on the math concepts, and it occurs through really carefully uh, selected story problems. So we know from um, researching classrooms and working with kids that a story problem like there's four kids and they're sharing six pizzas how much pizza does each kid get we know that that's a good problem for getting kids to think about fractions we don't really care about a lot of the real world details in our imagination we're going to cut the pizzas however we want um, we don't care if someone's more hungry than someone else right we ignore a lot of those details and as long as we're careful in our conversation with kids about that we have some evidence that this is a pretty good problem for getting kids to think about fractions. And that's the focus here is the fractions. I want to use a familiar situation to help them think about math, a math concept. We have a lot of research on how to do this well. We have some curricula that really do this really well. Um, and so that's something that you might see depending on the kind of classroom you're in, either now or in your future career. The next classroom does focus on math concepts. And I want to be clear that that's there. It's concepts plus mathematical modeling, but it acknowledges that um, when we use math in the real world, it's often messy. And I often think of this almost as a different genre of mathematics. The first one is these carefully chosen, really narrow story problems to get at a particular concept. Whereas when we think about using math in the real world, we might have to make assumptions, think about which real world variables we want to consider or not, um, and then decide how we can simplify that and approach it mathematically. That's a, it's a complicated process. There are people whose whole career specializes in that as, um, in terms of how they apply mathematics to the real world. And that becomes a learning goal in and of itself. I don't just want kids to learn fractions, I also want them to learn how to take real world situations and approach them mathematically. And that is reflected in the Common Core Standards, although perhaps not as strongly as it could be. This is something that the U.S. historically has struggled with in terms of including it substantively in classrooms and textbooks. So it's not something you're likely to see a ton of out in the real world. And then, but we do have, I should clarify, we do have more and more examples and growing body of research about how we can do it well. And then finally, there's classroom P, which really is just classroom O, except some of these real world topics are about social political issues, about issues of injustice that we see in our world. Um, and those may be things that come sort of directly from students' lives or from the broader world around them. And again, though, this still includes a focus on math concepts. It also just includes a focus on messy real-world context and social and political issues. All right, so what does our intuition tell us about these approaches and what makes the most sense? So a lot of people's intuitions would tell them that messy real-world problems 
um, which were classrooms OMPR, just they're too hard. So you really just need to focus on math concepts first. And sometimes this is framed in terms of age. Someone teaches elementary school and they say, that's really important, but elementary kids aren't ready. They can do that in middle school. And someone else teaches middle school, they say, yeah, that's great, but they'll do it when they get to high school and so on. Um, that's somehow how this is framed. What we know from research is that we have examples of how to do real world problems with all ages. There's room for us to continue to explore that, but we, we have examples of, that, of how we can do it. Um, we know that kids come to school ready to think about some of these real world variables. We've all seen a kid like Lucy who looks at the numbers and says, these, I don't care what the math says, these numbers just don't make any sense. You would never have this many um, cantaloupes. Uh, and that when we t tell kids to ignore that kind of stuff, that they actually get worse at this. They, they learn to turn off their real world brain when they're in math class. And that that teaches kids that um, math is therefore not useful in the real world. So that's uh, some evidence about why we do need to be including some messy real world problems in the classroom. One big belief in this area is that math is neutral. So you really shouldn't be bringing in political issues in the classroom. We sometimes think of math as like this objective, pure discipline that should be free of these concerns. It's not exactly a question research can answer for us, but one of the things we do know is that avoiding politics is just as much of a choice as choosing to include them. And there is growing consensus that children need opportunities to talk about these kinds of issues in the math classroom and to learn how to think about them and how to use mathematics with exploring these. But choosing to avoid talking about politics or injustice or things like that in our society sends a message as well. And the message is that things are fine and we don't really need to question them. And that's just as much of a message as saying, let's actually have a conversation about these topics. One concern is that there might be a trade-off between whether we focus on the real world versus focusing on the math concepts. And this is an area where we need more research. There's some evidence that um, it could be more engaging and pull kids in more, but we don't know, and there may be a time trade-off. That's something we need to know more about as we think about. We do have some good examples, though, of how, when properly approached, that this can really help kids develop a greater sense of agency, the idea that they can have, um, that they can positively affect the world or, or bring about positive changes in the world. And so this is just something where it's not 100% clear, but again, there's a growing consensus that this is an important learning goal in and of itself. Finally, uh, or in addition, some people might be worried that tackling political topics might be traumatizing or demoralizing to kids. Um, and that can be, and you do need to be mindful of how you frame them. And again, we have more and more examples of how to approach these topics in ways that are not damaging to kids and instead can focus more on building their agency or its sense of engagement with the world. And finally, a lot of people are worried that families or administrators may object to these topics, and that definitely can be the case. You need to be savvy about how you communicate with families before and after activities, how you're communicating with administrators, what kinds of networks and, and supports you have in terms of engaging with these kinds of topics. But that doesn't mean that the topics are, that it's inherently wrong to do this, just that you need to be savvy about how you approach it.